video, I'm going to teach you step by step how to determine the index of a refraction of this glass block using closed pin instead of a laser. I'm going to use this laser just to show you the path of the light when it's traveling through this glass. The materials that I need for this lab is a piece of cardboard or foam, a white piece of paper, the glass block, take an oath, a protractor, a ruler, about three close pins Two, three. some coloring pens and a regular pen first you need to prepare this page so fold this page Like this and like this. And then open it up. Place the ruler on this mark here and draw. A vertical line. Turn your ruler and over that almost invisible crease when you we folded I folded the paper so draw a horizontal line. This vertical line is the normal line and the horizontal line is the boundary line. In this step, you need to place the protractor on the intersection between the normal line and the boundary line. Then press the protractor and select the following angles. Make it like a dotted mark. 15 degrees. See here, 5, 10, 15 degrees. 20, 25, then you mark 30 degrees. 35, 40, 45 degrees. 50, 55, 60 degrees. So, make sure that you can see all these angles. Remove the protractor and connect the selected angle with the intersection. In this step, place the block right under the boundary line. Mark the intersection with a closed pin. Move the block right under the boundary line. Here we have two medians. This is there. And on this side is the glass block. Next, place a pin on your first angle, which is 15 degrees. In this step, I'm going to try to align 
the red head and yellow head pins looking through the glass side. Then I have to look when the body of both pins align, which is right there. Then I'm going to use this third pin and place where both bodies align. Place right here. And I'm doing inspection. Now I'm going to remove this pin and mark its location. In this step, I'm going to remove the block and I'm going to remove this pin. Now I'm going to connect this mark on the other side with my intersection. I'm going to place the protractor align here with 90 and I'm going to read this angle. So this angle is 10 degrees. So this is line is A a1 I'm going to use a second piece of paper to record my information I want to reuse this paper so I'm going to fold like this and as a title is index of refraction of a, a glass block. Make a table with five rows and four columns. The first row is the heading. So, in this column, I'm going to record the lines. So, my first one was A, A1. This is my angle of incidence. My angle of incidence, my first one, was 15 degrees. And my refracted angle is 10 degrees. Then, I'm going to find the ratio between both angles, which is 1.5. Now, I'm going to do the same thing for my second angle, which is 30 degrees. Now, I will bring back, bring back the materials, which is my foam paper, this one, which is my paper where I prepare everything, the block, and the three, the three pins. I have here my three pins. Okay, I'm going to uh, pin my second angle, which is 30 degrees. So, this one here will be my intersection. And I will place the block right under the boundary line. And I am going to look, align those pins, just the body, through the block. It's recommended for that you close one eye. Just keep one eye open and one close.
Okay, so I'm going to try to pin right here. All three are aligned through the glass. To save some time, what I'm going to do, I'm going to move the yellow pin to the next angle, which is 45, and then proceed to read, to find, to align the both pins on this side, and mark here, and then I will do the same thing for, um, for I think this one is 60, and I will mark on this side. And then I remove the block all together and connect my, my points where I saw through the glass with the intersection. So here I'm going to mark this one. And I'm going to move this to 45. And I'm going to try to align through the glass. So this is what I got for the 45 degrees. Now I'm going to move to the last one, which is 60. And try to see on the other side. This one was a little bit harder for me because probably it's almost off my peripheral vision. Um, that's what we call the blind spot. Um, but let's see what happened. So that's what I got right here on this for 60 degrees. Okay, so here is another one. And this is my last one. This one was pretty hard. Okay, now I'm going to connect these uh, points to, this, to the intersection. So that is my... Um, center to this and then I have this one then I have this one okay here is my B this is my C and this is my now I'm gonna complete this table so 30 and uh, this is my B, B1, B, B1. My, um, the angle, I will measure in a minute, but let me finish here these lines. So this is C, C1, which is 45 degrees, and D, D1 is 60, 60 degrees. So these are my incident angles. So my refracted one, I need to measure with a protractor. I did the first one, let me do the second one. So for B1, I see 21, actually, let me do that. Like, uh, like 21 degrees, right here. So that's my C. One, each is ten, twenty, thirty, one. Now for sixty degrees, which is my D, is I'm right here on fifty two. So as we notice, the refracted angle is smaller than the incident angle because when light is passing from air coming from air is going to a glass glass is more dense so the light is going to slow down as it slows down is going to refract towards the normal so the angle is going to always going to be smaller than the incident angle when it's coming from a median with is less dense like air to more dense like glass.
So now I'm going to calculate the ratio of both angles for each line. So here is 30 divided by 21 is 1 point, let me round to 1.43. 1.43. And 45 divided by 31 is 1.45. And 60 divided by 52 is 1.15. Because this lab rely on the eyesight of the experimenter. So there are um, human errors. So as you see here, um, these values, they should be about constant, but is kind fluctuate through an average of 1.45 to 1.5, or almost 1.5. But this value here, the last one, is a little bit off. So if I'm going to average and um, including this one that is a little bit off when compared with the other trials, I will be introducing more error. So for that reason, I'm not going to consider this result to finalize my experiment, just those three ones. So I have enough trials, I have three trials, which is good enough. So then it'll be just the three first ones, um, 1.5 plus 1.43 plus 1.45 divided by three. So the mean average is 1.46, which is the index of refraction for this particular glass block. So if I want to go farther and calculate the speed of light when passing through glass, I can use the formula. The index of refraction is the speed of light over the velocity of the light um, in the, the median. The speed of light in the air is 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. So here using my calculator divided by the index of refraction that I determined by doing the experiment. Let's see what I get. 3 EE8 divided by 1.46. So that is the speed of light in the glass. So let me use scientific notation to present this I'm result. I'm going to move the decimal to the left. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I stop right there. 2.05 times 10 to the eight meters per second. So this is how much the speed of light decreases as pass through the glass. So it was three times 10 to the eight, and now is 2.05 times 10 to the eight. So through this experimental lab, I was able to calculate the index of refraction of this glass, and also uh, use the result to calculate the actual speed of light as traveling through this glass.